Hey everybody, it's Michelle Lavore and Devin Lavore coming, coming at, at you. Ya. And we're so glad that you're here and uh, we just pray that you guys are blessed and encouraged by what the Lord is speaking to us. Welcome to the channel. And yes, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, it's just our hearts to um, share what God has um, spoken to us and we just pray that it is also an encouragement to you. And um, also a huge thank you to everyone who continues to give. Um, oh, we still yes. appreciate each and every one of you. And we are support-based, so if you would like to give to us, you can. We have a PayPal link below, and you can just click that. And we just really appreciate it, um, especially as we come into the new week and this weekend. Um, if you would like to give to us, we would just really appreciate it yeah and we generally like to go week to week yeah and by monday it's like we generally need like this certain amount by monday and we're kind of we're, we're kind of shy of that amount right now so you know just to throw that out there you know the lavores they have needs every week just like everyone else i guess yes. but <laughs> so if you want to click it click it please well thank you jesus in advance hallelujah yes. <laughs> you are the provider through the people so click it anyway <laughs> So, what is the word today? Man, I think the word today, not I think, the word today is the Lord wants you to see. Um, and I, you know, I was hesitating. I was like, how many words are going to come out for 2020 being the, the year of seeing and yeah. the year of vision and the year of perfect clarity? And, and I was like, I'm staying away from it. But I was like, you know what? If that's what the Lord is saying, then that's what the Lord is saying. Yeah. You know? And I, God shared some stuff with me this morning. And then he totally shared some stuff with my firstborn son, Joa. He, he shared some stuff with him. And Joa had no idea what I was going to share. He had no clue. And it was literally the same thing. He came out of worship and he was like, I really just feel like the Lord saying that, that, you know, as we enter into 2020, we're going to see the victory, you know, because this is us going up for our third time and all that. Um, and we're going to see the victory, right? And of course, we're here at the end of of. 2019 and there's all kinds of open-ended questions and open you know like you have all those open uh open documents on your mm -hmm. computer it's like you know that aside you know the lord's what is the lord's heart the lord's heart is like you are going to see the victory you know we've been seeing 1140 like crazy mm -hmm. and it always references john 1140 and that's god just giving us a little encouragement to say continue to believe and mm -hmm. you will see the glory and that kind of touched on what uh, basically what God was sharing with me and my son at two totally separate times but both this morning and that God's like I want you to see it mm -hmm. you and you need to have the faith mm -hmm. Luke 18 verse 8 yes you need to have the faith that that is going to happen that's what that's what it means to continue to believe but the Lord basically he is like this listen Evan light when you're in the dark you can't see Okay, when you're blind, you're in darkness and you can't see. But it's basically saying like if you're in a dark room, you're going to be bumping into things, you're walking around in darkness. But light brings uh, clarity. Clarity. You can see now. You're not going to be mm -hmm. bumping into the desk and smashing your foot on the chair. Although I do that right when it's completely bright in here. I'll just <laughs> crack out. Anyway, but the bottom line is light is truth. Darkness is lies. That's the long, that's the short of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Lord was like saying, those who don't know him, those who are just out there, you know, the who the, the enemies plunged in deception and darkness and the nations, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they're surrounded by lies. They believe lies, mm -hmm. but they believe that those lies are true. And that's what makes it dark. That's yeah. what, that's what gives power to the darkness is our faith. Look at that. Listen, your faith is going to plug into something. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's like the, the faith being plugged into a lie creates a stronghold of darkness and deception, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so I felt like the Lord was like, that's the spiritual truth, right? The truth is spiritual, just like mm -hmm. God is spirit and he seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth, right? But the Lord was like, but there is a physical, there is a physical manifestation of his glory and his power that leads to the open heart receiving that spiritual application of light versus darkness and and you are light in the lord and all that um 
because what was it? Was it just yesterday mm -hmm. when the Lord was talking to me about, I was like, Lord, it seems like, man, like we have some dark times and all that stuff. And the Lord reminded me of Ephesians 5, 8, mm -hmm. where it says, you are the light in the Lord. You're, you're, and then, uh, um, Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. It's like, mm -hmm. you, no, you're actually the, you're actually a key. You're a citizen of the kingdom of light. You're a citizen of the kingdom of truth. You're a citizen of the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. There is no, there's no darkness. Your father is full of light and there's no darkness in him. Mm -hmm. And you are a son and a child of the light. Therefore, he's, that's why he's constantly conforming you to the image of Christ because he's getting out all these dark things. It's mm -hmm. like you're, you are already connected to the light. So your, your, your life is not going to be marked by darkness. No. It's marked by light. You wake up in light. You wake up. Sure, our souls feel the battle. Mm -hmm. We feel it. But the bottom line is we already have the victory in him who overcame the darkness of the world. Mm -hmm. That's why he's like, and nothing in this world can really, really actually hurt you because I've already overcome it. You mm -hmm. know? And like Jesus himself, he was the the light that came into the world right you know and it's like he comes into the world and he overcame darkness and therefore if we are a part of him and fellowship with him then we we walk in that same light and and so god was just really kind of it, it's, it's funny because he actually really started last night talking about the light mm -hmm. and darkness and continued this morning talking about the light and how it relates to seeing mm -hmm. you know and seeing the glory you know so what was the Lord, I mean, was the Lord addressing like a time frame as far as like what we're believing God for and, you know, we've gone up the third time to see the victory and all that stuff. Was the Lord addressing that in, in re reference to the time frame? I, I'm not sure. I just know that the God was giving me his heart. He's like, remember, I'm giving you my heart. I'm not giving you all the details. I felt like the Lord was very strongly saying you know, particularly it like starting last night, like you're saying, like he was like the how and the when and the why, that's never something that I give you to be responsible for. Never, you know, show me, God, here's God. He's like, show me in scripture where I ever did that, right? Where I made other people responsible for the how and the when and the why and all. That's not, that's the father's job. Mm -hmm. You know, I said to you, ask. I said to you, seek. I said to you, knock. I said to you, believe. Mm -hmm. You know, the three armies in Second Chronicles. This is one of the scriptures God gave me this morning about seeing. Because we have to, when we see the manifestation of God, it opens up our heart to his heart. Mm -hmm. And God was like, think about those three uh, armies that were coming against Israel in Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 20. You know, what did they do? They... they they didn't have time to read bullet points and books about warfare and what you should do first and what you do second. Mm -hmm. No, they were like, oh God, <laughs> we need you. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. What do we do? And God spoke. He yeah. said, this is what I'm going to do. He, no, th he said, this is what I'm going to do. Now, in light of that, you do this. Yeah. And they were like, oh, okay. You want us to die. That's great. You want to put the army, uh, the, the, the musicians in front of the army. Okay. But it doesn't matter. It didn't matter how weird it was. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. God answers your prayer by having you do something weird. <laughs> anyway. But, um, but, but basically, you know, they did what the Lord asked them to do. You know, but there's no indication in scripture that they knew what God did and how he do it, how he did it and the when and the how and all the details. Mm -hmm. All they knew is, all right, we're supposed to sit in here. We're supposed to get our army, but then put the band in front of the army and sing, you know, great is the Lord. Uh, you know, he's good and he's worthy to be praised and his mercy and kindness endure forever. All that stuff. That's what they did. So in their, you know, now moment, day to day life their, in their actual time in history, that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. They were just singing and giving praise to the Lord with the, with the army behind them. And it's funny because it's like, well, why would you have us get in a battle array if you said we didn't need to fight in the battle? I'm confused. Mm -hmm. See, they had questions of their own back then. You know what I mean? But they did their thing and it's just like, okay, cool. And then it says, and then they woke up the next morning <laughs> or something like that. And then they went and, and basically the, the, well, the watchmen. Yeah, the watchmen, they saw, like, what is going on? What happened? 
All they knew was that the armies were gone and all of their stuff was just laid out there to be plundered, to be taken. Mm -hmm. Took them three days to gather in all the money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how did God do that? Doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. When did that happen? Well, it must have happened overnight because, you know what I'm saying? All of those, you know, big dad details were not... He did not give any of those to the Israelites to be responsible for. Mm -hmm. You know, Abraham or uh, not Abraham, uh, Mary and Martha. I don't know where Abraham came from. But anyway, Mary and Martha, he just said to to uh, Martha, was it in John 11, 40? Mm -hmm. He said, did I did I not tell you? See, he had already told her. But then he's reminding her and he's saying, did I not tell you that if you would continue to believe you would see the glory of God. He's not talking about see it in your spirit or, you know, get a little comforting side hug from Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, he's saying you're going to see something with these physical eyes that you're going to be able to touch with these here physical hands. Mm -hmm. You're going to see it, yeah. you know? So you have to trust the Lord. You have to know that what he says goes. You know, we can give so many more examples. Like, hey, come on, let's go to the other side. And then they get a storm. He gets up, rebukes the storm, and says, where's your faith? You know what I'm saying? He's like, that's all I asked you to have. All I asked you to have, Martha, was to continue to believe. I'm not even at telling you what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, when, you know. I'm just saying, continue to believe. And it's like, can you do that? That's the part that I'm giving you to do. I'll do the rest. You know, my son, my firstborn, uh, he was having such a hard time this morning. You know, sometimes he gets up, he wakes up in these moods, and it's just like, hey, Harley Davidson's going by. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we, uh, he, he wakes up in these moods, and sometimes it's like, it's like he's lost in this ocean that's just beating him back and forth, beating him back and forth with a, a, an ocean of emotion. You know what I'm saying? And so... And so I was trying to talk to him. And I was like, "Bub, this is what you need to do right now. You need to pray. You need to just go and just like." And he was having a hard. You know, when you're in that when you're in that place, it's hard to do that. Yeah. It's hard to stop yourself and just do that. But then he ended up having to go to the bathroom for something. And I was like, "Bub, did you just go and just throw that away? All you had to do was throw something away. Why were you in there for so long?" He was like, "Well, I was in there and I was praying. I was praying to the Lord and and um, literally within minutes." because he was in the middle of eating his breakfast, in minutes, his whole attitude had changed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Joa, what did you do? He's like, well, I just prayed. And I was like, do you feel better? I can tell you're different. He's like, I do. And I was like, do you know how that happened? He's like, no. Do you know when it happened? No. <laughs> and I was like, and because I, I was saying to him, I was like, Bob, sometimes you don't need to know why you're feeling what you're feeling and where it's coming from and all the psychoanalytical stuff that goes with it, the paralysis of analysis. Sometimes you just need to identify this is not good. It's not God. God help me. Yeah. And then you, then as a result of that prayer, God does something in both instances, what you're going through and how God dealt with it. You don't know why you don't know how you don't know when you don't know any of those things, but it takes place. Yeah. You know, because you cried out to God. That's what they did in Second Chronicles. They just cried out to God. And he said, okay, here, do this. And then he did the rest. You know, and the only thing God is asking us to do is to believe. Mm -hmm. Believe and you will see. Every single solitary miracle that Jesus did was not like a prophetic word for you to believe in. No, it was like I'm doing something and it manifests in their life. You know, the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus' daughter, healing demon, I mean, healing people uh, possessed by demons, uh, healing paralytic. All of those things were like, this is the horrible, horrible situation I'm in. Jesus steps in. Can you help me? And now, oh, look at, look now. Mm -hmm. it, it's all over. It's all done. There's a, there's a divine reversing, you know? So I just feel like that's what the Lord's saying. You know, he's just saying, like, he wants you to believe and continue to believe, stay in a position of believing, stay in a position of faith so that you can see the glory. Because if you truly have a position, if you're if you're truly believing and you're like, I am going to see the the the, the glory of God, doesn't matter what happens or not happen, whatever. I know what's going to happen. His word over my life is going to happen. So I'm going to stay in this position to receive it. That's exactly what you're going to do. 
you're going to receive it. But if you begin to doubt and wonder, ah, no, I, I'm not, I'm done with that, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to turn and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. In here, you might be at the same job, doing the same stuff or whatever, but your heart is no longer waiting and longing for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and God's like, don't, God's like, don't do that. Continue to believe and you will see the glory of God. Okay, so having a little off-camera discussion, mm -hmm. Michelle asked me a great question. And that question, what was the question again? <laughs> about the, the prophetic words. Oh, Maybe. prophetic words. Right, right. About how like when Jesus showed up, he didn't give him prophetic words. Right. Well, because there's a, remember a, a while ago we talked about there's a time of hiddenness mm -hmm. and then a time of manifestation. Oh my gosh. The Lord, uh, the, the Father began prophesying about the... Uh, the Messiah before he kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden. Mm -hmm. And it was like 4,000 years later or something like that, that he, uh, that there was a time of manifestation. Yeah. So that whole time was a time of prophetic words and believing and, and a lot of the prophets believing and hearing these things from the spirit and they're writing them down and they're declaring them. And a lot of them didn't come to pass in regards to the Messiah, this, this Messiah that they kept hearing about and seeing about. Is seeing in the spirit and and they're reading other prophets writings and going yes this is the same guy i'm i'm, I'm seeing this prophetic person this this great the one that moses talked about another prophet i'm seeing this and they never saw it isaiah you know he died didn't see it you know 800 years before jesus i believe his ministry was whatever but there comes a time of manifestation mm -hmm. And in the time of manifestation, that's not the time to get a prophetic word and then hold on to it and wait patiently for it. No. Uh, when you go into labor, is that a time to wait? No. Well, for some it well, is, yeah. but it's like, no, <laughs> something has activated and it yeah. can't be deactivated. Yeah. It's, it's on. Well, you so just it's a, have to be ready for it, you know? Yeah. And it's just a matter of time before there's going to be a baby. Yeah. It's not a time for just, oh, you're in labor. Just hold on. We don't know when. Well, yeah, but well, you know about when. <laughs> it's going to be pretty quick, pretty soon. You see what I'm saying? So when when the Lord when it, the Lord Himself, He's like, I have I have come. I have, I am manifest. The Messiah, your promised Messiah, is here. It is time to do the things that was prophesied that the Messiah would do when He came. And kind of just talking about you know the. Jesus coming and he's manifesting himself. I really feel like kind of the Lord um, has just been again encouraging us to continue to believe because he's like, I want you to be ready for when I do come. Because um, that was one of the things, you know, when Jesus came, many people miss the day. He's like, you miss the day of your visitation. And because that's what it is, yeah, that's what I knew. That's what you're supposed to share. Thank yes. you. <laughs> I'm interrupting you to let you know that what you're doing is good. Go. <laughs> so but, the interruption. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and so it's like, you know, here is the Lord. He's saying like, hey, I'm coming to visit you, but you weren't prepared. You weren't ready mm, for me come to come. Now. And and so I, God's just kind of been sowing this. Even he started last night. We actually um watched uh, Facing the Giants um, with our kids yesterday, and God just totally used that movie. It was awesome. Glorious day. But, um, yes. <laughs> but so last night, though, one of the things that they have in um, the movie is he's talking with um, the, um, there's two men, and there's a head coach and this other guy that just prays, um, and he comes to him, and they tell the story, basically, of you know two farmers he's like okay there's two farmers they both need rain they they desperately need rain and they're praying to the lord for this rain mm -hmm. but one of the farmers he goes out and he's plowing his fields mm -hmm. and he's like which one truly believes that the lord is going to give the rain and it was like well the one who's prepared his field and i feel like that's kind of like where god is at, you know is has us or is just reminding us of just like continue to prepare your hearts your you know the field is really our hearts continue yeah. to prepare for his day of visitation continue to have faith continue to believe his promises and the words that he's spoken and mm -hmm. because the rain will come and and it will come all of a sudden 
just like you know the story of the um, wise and the foolish virgins were ten of there's five of them who were ready they had the oil for their lamps and they had extra and the others didn't but then it was you know all of them were sleeping you know it was late in the midnight hour and the bridegroom comes literally that's what it says and about at midnight yeah and it was like he comes and suddenly he's like hey it's time for the feast let's go and those that were prepared were ready to just get up and go but the others were like oh wait we've we need more oil. Can we have some of yours? Can we? And they're like, you have to go buy your own. And See, because in that story, if yeah. I may interrupt again, of course. <laughs> um, all of them fell asleep. Yes. It says they all fell asleep because that's just natural. Because he was you know? it's just long like just, and coming. Yeah, I was just like, oh, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm starting to nod out, you know, <laughs> but, but I'm going to be ready when the mm-hmm. time comes, mm-hmm. you know? So that's all. Just yeah. all of them fell asleep. Yeah. So it wasn't like one was better than the other because one had more oil in their lamp that they're not going to fall asleep. No, they're just the natural the natural way of life just happened to everybody. Yeah. You know. But they were prepared. Yeah. You know, obviously because they had the extra oil. Um and and so they they go into the feast, but the five that weren't prepared, the foolish they were not allowed to enter in because it was too late. And, um, and so um, I was also reading uh, Luke uh, 18, verse 8, and that is, again, talking about the Lord. He's like, hey, I, am, I will defend. I'm going to come, and I, I'm going to come speedily, but will I find faith, persistent faith? And, yeah. and it was just like, Okay, so here again, the Lord is like, are you going to have persistent faith? Because when I come, I'm coming quickly. Um, and of course, it reminded me, we read Revelation chapter 3 last night um, and verse 11. It says, I am coming quickly, so hold fast to what you have. So when I was looking at the scriptures, there was, they said speedily and quickly. And so we were just talking about, you know, what, I was just like, what does that really mean? Because... Here the Lord is talking about coming quickly, yet he was speaking at a time when he was he was talking about like this is why I want you to continue to believe and continue to have faith and, and don't give up and don't and give up and, faint and hold from the fast. long waiting. Yeah, and it's like wait a minute. I thought she was just, coming speedily. <laughs> but it's more about he's when he comes it's an all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. He's suddenly gonna be there and suddenly you're gonna have to be ready. Yeah. And it's like our are your fields prepared for that sudden rain that's going to mm-hmm. come down? Are you, are you ready with with your jars out and and ready to yeah. catch? You know when the when the dam breaks and it's and God is just like here you go. Are you ready for that? And it's like if you have been following the Lord and just continuing to believe and continue to just pursue Him with your heart, He's like you will be ready because your your oil is filled. You know. Can I can I give an example? Yeah. I'm giving this picture of the whole. Remember the scene. The, I gave this vision, uh, this word from the Lord. Was it back in March of 2018? I think it was, where the Lord was saying like, "There's a dam up." He showed me this picture of this dam up on this up on this uh, mountain, and there was this big canyon that was separating one side of uh, of the mountain uh, side from another, or whatever. And I was like, what is going on? And the Lord's like, there's supposed to be water in here. This is supposed to be a river, but they've dammed it up. And he wouldn't let me know who they was at that moment. But it was like, that's going to break. And so there was all these people that were that were at the side of the, uh, the edge. They were kind of camped out by the edge of the canyon because they were waiting because God had brought them there to wait to, for the, uh, the dam to break. And over a period of time people started packing up and leaving Mm -hmm. and it was like they stopped believing and he's like that's why i brought them here early at this time because i want to weed out all the ones who aren't going to believe do i want them to be there absolutely i didn't bring them there for nothing Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but it's just like they couldn't wait they couldn't they couldn't hack it it kind of touches on that luke 18 Mm -hmm. 1 through 8 it's like listen you need to not you know turn and then he's like and i saw i saw this vision again of like The person who was ready is they had all their empty pails and they had all their little water system going to so what they were going to do when the when the dam breaks and the water's there they're just already like noah 
by faith, he built the ark and he was prepared for what God, the manifestation of what God was going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, praise the Lord that God didn't prophesy to him and then it manifested seven days later because he yeah. would not have been ready and he would die. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so th there's another example of someone who's ready, but they, they got all their stuff ready and they got their empty buckets and all that. But there's other people, they're still hanging out by the edge of the canyon, but they're, they're, they're buckets that are supposed to be ready to catch water. They're full of dirt and they're growing little plants in them. You know what I mean? They've built a little life on the edge of the of the canyon, but they're not really actually prepared for when the dam breaks because the, the, the things that the Lord has asked them to do, make sure you have these buckets set up here and this set up here and make sure this is that way and this way. None of that's done anymore. Mm -hmm. They've repurposed it and they're doing something else with it, which is what happens a lot of times with ministries, mm -hmm. which happens a lot of times with, with the thing that God gives you to do. It's not working out the way you thought it was going to work out in the time frame you're going to work it out and all that stuff. And so you start doing something different. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, the Lord's like, why are you doing that? I never asked you to do that, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so I just thought that was a funny picture of like, I felt like the Lord was like, you know, this is his video. So he's jumping in. He's like, it's like this. This mm -hmm. is another example. Because mm -hmm. some people, they just up and leave. Mm -hmm. But other people, they stay camped out at the edge, but they're not like ready to receive it when it comes. Because when the dam breaks, another example, a dam breaks, suddenly it's like, you hear the dam breaking and it's like, once you hear the dam breaking, it's you have no time to prepare. Yeah, it's getting ready to snap open and boom! Here comes all this water. And those who did what the Lord said and set themselves up in the right way in the proper order, etc., they're going to receive of it. But the other ones, they're they're going to be scrambling to be like, oh my gosh! There's no way you're going to be dumping out all that water, or I mean, all that dirt from those buckets mm -hmm. and cleaning out all the dirt and all that. And it's not going to be ready because yeah. it's going to come rushing through. And it's and it's going to be uh, um, it's just another example of a suddenly and those who are ready versus those who aren't. Mm -hmm. And I just think another person um, that we can or just an example is with Abraham. Um, oh, yeah. And because he was his heart was in a place ready to receive, you know, his heart was. It was like, all right, you know, I'm still believing for the promises of God to be filled, fulfilled in my life. And he waited, you know, 25 years for his promise, which was Isaac. Mm -hmm. But, um, and this is in Genesis chapter 18, when the Lord comes with two others. And he comes and Abraham sees him from a distance. And he goes running out to him. He's like, hey, please come. You know, his heart was ready to receive them. And he prepares a meal for them. And that's when the Lord is like, hey, I'm going to come and visit you again. And, you know, about this time next year. And Sarah is going to have a baby. Yeah. And, and, but it's like that his that heart. Yeah. Yes. His, his <laughs> heart was ready for a visitation from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, um. And so it's like that's really where the Lord has has for us. And again, that was a suddenly. Abraham was just doing what he normally does every yeah. single day. And then suddenly here is this these visitors that are coming. And and he was just like, Okay, whoa, this is he he just knew, I think, by his spirit mm -hmm. that it's just like, Okay, I am like, Oh, the Lord brought you here yeah, yeah. just so I can help you out and serve mm -hmm. you. Because yeah. you wouldn't you would not have come this way otherwise. Yeah. You know? And and so um they come and stop by and so <laughs> he's it's like, just, Oh wait a minute, you are the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no, but it's just like that's really where God wants our hearts. It's this in a place of readiness, a place of like when we we are our spirits when they get moved by by however the Lord comes into our life, whatever open doors that He sets before us, it's like our hearts are ready to move in that direction because we we're continually just listening to the Lord. We're continuing to keep ourselves ready yeah. for for what is to come. Yeah. You know, it's very much like the you know a lot of warriors and stuff. They continue even though they might not be in battle. You know, they're gonna continue to practice. You know, like keep their skills up because so they're it's ready. Like, so they're ready. You don't want to just it's like how do you field dress an M16 again? I forget. And it's like you, no, you, you have to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that on the field. No, you have you to know? be prepared and ready um, for whenever you're needed. 
-hmm. and and so it's like that's how God wants us to be. He wants it's like us when to you're on call ready. at work. Yes. When you're on call, you're de for those of you who know what it's like to be on call. You're just in a position of readiness. Yeah. You could be your phone rings and you're like, oh no, what? Oh, oh no, that's just my daughter. Okay, what's up? You yeah. know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but you're ready to get yeah. that call mm -hmm. for like, oh, need you to come in. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And so God's like, just be ready because I am coming. So God just really wants us to be ready. Yeah. And um, I think it's really, it's be ready to see his glory in our life. Be ready to see the light. Um, and because he is getting ready to... Get ready um, to see. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he is going to open our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we there is the, the darkness... Um, like you said, you can be blinded by darkness, but you can also be blinded by the Lord. Like he's meaning he's keeping things hidden from you. Right. He's like, I'm not going to show this to you because that's part of the journey that I have you on sure. is that you're you, because I want you to have faith in me and, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have you go forward without seeing so that you don't, um, give up too soon. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and we actually if we had said, known that this journey was going to take this long, I yeah. mean, we were ready to see the promise fulfilled by March 2017. Yeah. Because <laughs> the Lord's speaking all this stuff to us, and we're like, God's like, no, this is just the beginning of the journey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, as long as it don't take 25 years, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that was one of the things from the uh, Facing the Giants. Yes. You know, it's just like, will you still love me if... If, if, you know, what, what did he say to his wife? Will you still love the Lord if he doesn't give you children? That big desire of your heart, will you still do it? And she's like, well, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, the, the Lord was just like, yes. But I think we addressed that in our previous video. But we anyway. <laughs> but, but also actually something from the, the Facing the Giants actually had to do with um, one of the football players as like a, a drill, the coach put a blindfold on him and mm -hmm. and he had um they call it the death crawl means you're kind of like a bear crawl but you have somebody on your back that you have to carry and he's like all right i want you to do this all i want you to do is give me your best and and so he's he's going and he thinks okay he's i'm blindfolded just, i'm just trying to get to the 50 yard line and That's and he's heart. going and going and going <laughs> but the coach is like don't he's like is this the 20 and he's like don't worry about that just keep going give me your best don't give worry me your about best the time frame yeah the <laughs> it's distance like, just keep going keep going <laughs> and so you know he's just like he keeps going and going and you know at nearing the end his you know of course your muscles would just be burning and he's like i can't keep going he's like just keep going keep going and you know and and so he gets to this point where he's like he, he drops down and he's Brock. like, his name yeah, is his Brock. name's Brock. And he's just like, this has to be the 50. It has to be. It has to be the 50. <laughs> and so then the coach takes his blindfold off. Mm, he causes him to see. And he's Come on like, now. you're in the end zone. Look up, Brock. You're in the end zone. Yep. <laughs> and it's and a very tearful moment. It is. It was so good <laughs> because, again, it's like, he's like, why did he... And he told him, he's like, I'm going to blindfold you because I want you to give me your best and not give up. I don't want you quitting when there's more in you to give. Yeah. Because you, know? you think I've done enough. Just give me I've, your absolute best. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, that's really what the Lord is, is seeking from us, which is yeah. why he blinds us so much at, like from certain things. You know, mm -hmm. as we go in the journey, and we're just the like time I don't frame, understand. just as a random <laughs> example, you know. But, but and just <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes it's like you don't understand fully why God's doing what He's doing, and but then later on, He gives you some clarity, and you're like, oh, that oh, this makes more sense of why you're doing that. But you're still like going forward. It's like, okay, Lord, we still don't know what you're doing. But he's like, yes, but I have that for a reason because I want to get your absolute best out of you. Mm -hmm. And and so it's just like that's that was what the Lord was doing in that moment. But I just feel like it's like God is just like, get ready, be prepared yeah. for me to open your eyes, for you to see, and you will truly be amazed. You know, just like the glory Brock of God was in in the movie because it was just and his whole team was amazed because he's like, wow, I just went to the end zone 
that was so much further than I thought I could ever go. Well, and the funny, there's a little funny part in, he's like, you just, I just saw you carry a 140 pound man, a hundred yards across the field. Don't tell me you're, there's not more in you that I'm, you know, <laughs> you know, there's more in you that you're giving yourself credit for. And the guy's on the side, he's going, uh, coach. And he's like, he's like, I'm not talking to you right now. I'm, I'm talking to Brock. And the second time he's like, uh, coach. And he's like, well, what is it, Jeremy? It's like, I'm 160. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, wow. You actually carried more than I thought you were carrying. Yeah. I mean, look at you, man. You got way more in you, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just like, and so the faith, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like you've got more in you than you think. Yeah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what you have in you. But that's another video. So, <laughs> to be continued. Yes. So, <laughs> I just say, I, I just really feel like the Lord is saying, like, be prepared. Be ready. Mm -hmm. for his visitation to come and when he yeah. comes to visit Jesus. he is going to open our eyes and we are going to be flooded with his light with his glory he's going to take his hand away from the cleft of the rock and you're going to see his glory mm -hmm. and and his light manifest in our life and i really yeah. believe that you know this next year Jesus. it is a year where we will see We're god more see. clearly i was like god you went there didn't you you, you, you went cliche on me again yes so 2020 the year of seeing yes <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going to be a year of seeing the lord it's going to be a year of running with the lord mm -hmm. it's going to be a year of um, that's why you can run that's we already yeah. touched on it because you'll be able to see yeah you know and 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 just, I believe that the Lord, He has so much for us this year. Um, I have just some of the words that God has given me for this next year is that it's going to be a year of seeing. It's going to be a year of running. Um, we're going to, um, it's going to be a year of just uh, dancing leaping and, and leaping. Dancing. It's going to be singing. <laughs> yes, singing. And it's going to be a time of oil and spices. Um, and just, and there's just so much to it. I think we'll have to, we'll probably end up doing a video if the oh, Lord has us do it. Yeah, um, if, of if just so. going more in depth of just some of the things that the Lord has spoken over this next year. Um, and just what he is saying over it. But yeah. I just feel like if anything today, he is like, continue to believe, have faith and you will see, you will yep. see the light and you will yep. see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we hope you guys are blessed by this video. And, um, you know, we're all in this together. We're all children of the light who our Father is in heaven. We're all in this together. There's no one who's better than the other or whatever. Mm -hmm. We're all a part of the same family. You know, so as you, uh, as we encourage you, you guys encourage us all the time with different ways. And so we're all just part of the same family. Yeah. You know, so we just hope that, you know, as we do our part, you know that supply to us to do in the body that you out there will will be blessed and encouraged by the spirit of god through his word to uh be your part of the body you know yeah. what i mean and so uh with that said i'm not going to say anything else well until next time guys <laughs> <laughs> so with that guys um we <laughs> will see you again soon yep bye bye all right bye see ya.